All right, that's recording. That's recording. This is recording. Oh, you have it on your laptop too? Or is that another camera somewhere? No. Oh, you're saying the audio. The audio is recording. Sick. All right. Okay. I feel like we can like film on like a fun intro later. Like let's just yeah. like get into yeah. the meat of it. All right. <laughs> Hi guys. Hello YouTube. <laughs> Welcome back to our channel. Um, today is a very fun episode. We are going to be taste testing the DR3 St. Hugo Wine Collab. You've been we, asking. You've been asking. It's finally time. DR3. DR3. And we do, because you guys know, we don't really know anything about anything. anything. Yeah. Uh, and so we made sure to bring in an expert. We have a wine expert with us who's going to actually teach us about the wine and maybe give it a, a little rating. So, Danny, let's see how you do. Yeah. No pressure. Cheers. Okay. Well, for a little refresher, everyone, welcome to our kind of like first real like youtube youtube video, video? Oh, shit. um that's not like just a us recording the podcast yeah um so welcome to eric Hi. this is eric long time <laughs> friend of the pod um he's one of the most knowledgeable people we know about wine um and he worked he used to work at my favorite wine bar which i'm not going to give you the name of because i don't want anyone to come to it um <laughs> and uh steal it from me so maybe if you're lucky you can ask me in person and i'll let you know um but eric has so graciously agreed to come on today yeah, to and you. teach us about wine because today we're gonna be tasting something that we've been teasing for a long time on this podcast the daniel ricardo wine we got it we got it we're tasting it we're learning about it so, and it wouldn't be a TGONF brunch club episode if we didn't have food. Brunch is subjective. Brunch is a mindset. Yeah, brunch, brunch is, is a mindset. mindset. But so we're having tacos. Yeah, tacos. Well, I already told the story, but I texted Eric and I said, "Okay, what goes well with these wines?" And he said, "A nice juicy steak." And I said, "All right, well, let me just throw in a Peter Luger uh, order right quick." Um, <laughs> and I said, "How do you feel about tacos?" And so here we are. We have tacos. We have steak tacos. We, we got, have, do have the steak. We have steak. Yeah. We have El Pastor. We've got shredded chicken tinga. We've got shrimp and we've got fish. And we've also got the classic chips and guac. So I'm excited to eat some of this and drink some wine. We've got the wine breathing. The wine is breathing. And we have the Shiraz and the Cabernet. What is it? Cab Sauv? Yeah. Mm. Yes. You so, have to say the full names. Like, thank you. Everyone will know. Um, so we've got two wines to taste test today, and Eric's going to guide us through a little tasting, teach us a little bit about Australian wine. Oh. I think first, before we jump right on no, into that. No, yeah, we're not, we're not jumping right in. We just need to hear more from Eric about himself. Yeah. And I feel like, Eric, please give us a little rundown about, about yourself, about your career, about your own history in yeah. the wine world, mm -hmm. um, and why, basically, tell the viewers why you're the right person to be here today. Sell yourself. Sell yourself. Elevator, <laughs> elevator pitch, Eric. <laughs> so after this action, I'm going to start my own podcast and it's going to be all about <laughs> wine and, you know, fan, fanning out on wine. I'm just kidding. Uh, I would listen to that. Yeah. But yeah, so I'm <laughs> Eric. I was born in LA, Inglewood, California to be exact. Um, I basically just started off as a bartender throughout like my whole, like while I was in college and ended up really liking it and when i moved to new york before that I, like my touch was a little bit at which you know big company whole foods mm -hmm. uh so i was there for five years and they they had like a small little wine bar so i did like the occasional like one or two shifts at the wine bar i had no idea what it was <laughs> about and so they would do like small tastings you know try to upsell on the wine and so anyways long story short uh, that's kind of where I like started getting my hands into wine. Uh, and from there I moved to New York, uh, maybe like a year after I stopped working there and then worked at a restaurant, a Michelin star restaurant and started learning more and more and more about wine. Um, 
a lot of New World stuff mostly, so mostly like American to be exact. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then from there, just like kind of you know, let's let's be honest, it's about how much you drink of it. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can learn you can learn everything you need to know about wine. Um, and my background is like I studied biochem. Uh, okay. And so it kind of like it's hand in hand in a sense where like I understand what fermentation is. I understand, right. you know, what like what photosynthesis is. Mm-hmm. I understand like all these little things. So all that came like really easy and mm-hmm. it just made it a lot more fun to kind of like hear the stories of these like winemakers. Yeah. And like their process on how they grow these grapes. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. huh? I'm so excited. Did you, we, well, did you, I know you didn't take like an official sommelier class, did you? No, I didn't. So, um, you can, which I think is great. Like if you, I think it's also when you do that, like when you actually take a course, uh, you take classes and all that and you learn from people. Um, but you're, and you're also like, you know, they tell you where to start from. Like you go, you go to France and they talk about all the regions and they, they go to Spain, they go to all the regions and then all the laws and all that stuff. And then, but the big thing that everyone does is like the tastings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So then all the tastings that they do, they, you know, they talk about the wine and then they compare it, for instance, a Grenache from the Rhone Valley versus a Grenache from uh, Spain and Priorat or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they'll be like, oh, okay, you can tell that this is from here because of the warmer weather in Priorat or like the microclimates, blah, blah, blah. You can get more in depth yeah. from there, right? Um, but yeah, it's usually about like the tasting, like the tasting is really like the hands on and like kind of where, where you learn the majority of the, th- of like the practice, I guess. Yeah. Would yeah. Say, right. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been a lot of fun and so you just drank a lot of wine and pretty much figured out what was good. Yeah. I was yeah. wobbling home half the time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a rough life. Good little Let's wine. drink some wine. It's very... With all these cords, we gotta get cordless mics. Mm-hmm. <laughs> up. So here's that D3R, Shiraz, or DR3. Syrah. <laughs> DR3, sorry. <laughs> They're the pants. It's from St. Hugo. Yeah, so St. Hugo Winery, um, South Australia, uh, in Banarusa. Uh, they create, Barosa, sorry. Uh, they create about half of the wine for Australia, and it also has some of the oldest vines mm. uh, in the world, actually. Oh, wow. damn. So, in the... This is I'm like going to butcher this. I'm going to butcher this. So, phylloxera happened around the world. It's this bug that basically just started um, kind of eating up on the vines and the grapes and whatnot and killing off uh, all these vines. And... Um, the world had to find a way, you know, to make these grapes survive. Mm. And luckily in Australia, they did some quarantine of some sort and they were able to keep their old vines, uh, going. Okay. Hmm. So some of the vines are like hundreds of years old. Uh, I'd say like maybe 150 max, but still like, I don't think even in Europe, there's a lot of places that don't have anything of that age. Yeah. Wow. Interesting. Um, what's a, what is the climate like there? So Australia in general is really hot. Mm-hmm. So that area, I would compare it almost to like uh, Northern California and like the Napa Valley. Okay. Okay. Um, or the Rhone Valley mm. in France. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which is why they so grow all the Syrah. For, perfect for wine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta pass so. Oh yeah. I'll pass. Don't worry. I'll pass. Thank yeah. And what's the key to tasting a wine? Like what kind of, what do I have to know to be able to pick up? So I'm tongue? serving a little bit cause it's going to be more about like the visual in the beginning. Yeah. I'm going to give this to our producer, Harley. Oh, producer, friend of the pod. <laughs> I wear a bunch of hats. She's here. She's just a guest. And she's here. here. Our live studio audience, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. We have a live laugh track. <laughs> She holds this place together, guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so basically you kind of want to see the the juice, right? You kind of want to see like what it looks like first. The legs of the of the wine kind of tells you a little bit about like the alcohol. So if you do give it a quick little swirl, mm-hmm. you can kind of see it against like, for instance, this white napkin. Sorry, it's dirty. Uh, <laughs> 
can kind of get an idea of like, for instance, like age, if it's like, it has like a brownish hue to mm-hmm. it, like you start telling, you know, the older it gets, the more brown it gets. Uh, you can kind of see also maybe how much extraction was done. The darker it looks, then either the skins are like really thick Mm -hmm. or like it was extracted or macerated for a longer time. So you get a little bit more of that like color from the skin. Yep. Or tannin, whatever you want to go by. Um, Yeah. And then you go in for the smell. Sorry guys, I'm just getting extra content. Smells good. (laughs) Basically, what, what, what do you smell? Like everything, everything is very, per person, you know, perception, right? It's like, what do you really smell? gooseberries. (laughs) <laughs> gooseberries <laughs> just kidding one time eric told or uh, audrey told me that that's what it was and i said i don't even know what a gooseberry smell really? <laughs> i literally <laughs> i didn't even know that was a real thing what I thought that was from like dr seuss i mean it does smell berry-ish yeah so you can say like red currant for instance or okay. black currant, yeah uh some kind of like blackberry i you... am unfortunately suffering through a cold right now so the smell the smell sense very not dim. there that's smell, but it's smoky. i'm smoky but i'm getting like yeah Almost, yeah, like, like, a, almost like a cherry, but not, like, very cherry, like a, like a, that's black currant, right? Nice. Isn't, like that, like, <laughs> no, isn't yeah. that actually what that is? No, yeah, like, Isn't it's, black currant cherry? No, it's a different no. it's, fruit. It's a fruit, but it, like, every, you know, wine grape looks like a cherry, or, like, a, a berry of some sort. Mm-hmm. And so, I feel like everywhere, like, dark, like, for instance, like, a Shiraz or Syrah, um, in this, in this sense, you can think of, like, any, like, dark berry. Okay. Like okay. blackberry, or right. and you're not gonna be wrong. It's like you know your. I love a no wrong answer situation. <laughs> yeah, it's like I love an upper interpretation. And I could be like, this smells like, like some kind of bay leaf, or even like coffee bean or something. Okay, well, so definitely not getting that, but it smells like the Nyquil I've been wearing. <laughs> yeah, this is Robert. This is this is giving Nyquil with Vicks. <laughs> <laughs> The Vicks version. Sorry, Danny, your your wine smells like cough medicine. It's a little bit of scissor up in the, in my cup. I mean, it smells really nice. It's it smells like really you, good. You get a lot of that fruit, but also a lot of that savoriness that you get from like these uh, are the legs, right? Exactly. Like when it like drips, you can like see the drips down. Exactly. What does that so mean? You know more than me. Hmm? I said you know more than me. I didn't. Know it just that. it can be like alcohol content, or it does mean alcohol content. So what the is... thicker the legs, you'll see them drip yeah. longer. Like they'll you'll get like a longer. I guess leg. Mm, yeah, right? yeah. Because uh, these are pretty long. Yeah. And so, what does that mean? If it's these probably are so hotter climate. Like okay. It's, yeah. Not probably. Yeah. It's like warmer <laughs> climate. Um, yeah. You this can see area... like right here. You, like how like much you can really see them. Yeah. It kind of looks like they kind of look like um, in Snow White, like the poison apple. You know how like the oh, the yeah. like animation of like the poison dripping down the apple. That's what these yeah. look like to me. It's poisonous. <laughs> okay, I'm comparing yeah. Danny here, like it's some medicine and a poison apple. <laughs> Clearly, I was not a Ricardo. All right, I'm eager to taste it. Okay, wait. Yeah, that's right. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers Carly, off camera. Cheers. Oh, that's smooth. Mm-hmm. That is smooth. It tastes different than how I thought it was based on the smell. Yeah. Yeah, so. It's really sweet. Yeah. It's sweeter so, than I thought. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I can feel it on my tongue, like mm-hmm. going all the way back, touching all those sweet senses. Sometimes sweetness is, per- uh, sometimes acid is perceived as as like <laughs> sweetness, right? Like, uh, I don't know, what are they called? Warheads or whatever? Mm-hmm. So yeah. like you have those and you think they're like really sour, right? But yeah. it mixes in really well with the sweetness. Yeah. First they're sour, so, then they're sweet. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so like... When this, like, if it has, like, almost that fruit quality, but also, like, acidity, then you start perceiving it as, like, sweet because it's something that you remember. Mm. Yeah. Um, but in reality, like, they're, it's actually probably bone dry. I'm just dying that Carly <laughs> on a tiny little stool. Wait. Cheers. <laughs> Carly is. <laughs> Poor. She does really just. She doesn't want to be part of it, but she okay. wants to be part of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny that was really funny just looking over okay i'm sorry to interrupt but i also am gonna get a taco. no yeah. no you want no. another taco yes i will the fish taco? well because i taco. what yeah. we learned from the last yeah, we did a t2nf brunch club um with ferrari trento wines where we did a wine tasting with them uh-huh. and he told us that 
what like if you're gonna do a pairing wine with food you should like take a bite and then immediately exactly take the wine in it'll be like really different exactly and so that's what i'm really gonna try here i'm using my so to be honest it's probably not gonna be great with the the fish if you had fish i'm eating steak oh right you're now. good so yeah. I, 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 I went for that. what you wanted me it's because i went i went for fish <laughs> which is probably a mistake honestly mm -hmm. i'm doing uh, pork yeah that'll work the fattiness mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me go check taco, first of all. Shout out. Where is this from? <laughs> My local spot. An mm. Antijos? Mm hmm Something? Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Antojitos. That, <laughs> together, let me tell ya. I did the let spicy, um... Not the, it's not that spicy, but I did the hotter hot sauce on this one. It's gonna be by surprise. Mm. <laughs> wow. Mhm. Mm I have a great combo. Mhm. Mm it's actually not that bad with the shrimp either. No. Mhm. Mm wow. Oh, I love I wine. Love wine. <laughs> <laughs> I love one of tacos. <laughs> I love to hang out. This is literally the perfect night for me. You know, and that's what wine is all about, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's not really, like, yeah. You can come up with the fine details and tell everyone, like, oh, this is how you should have it. This is how you should eat w with it. But in reality, it's about the good times. It is. That's, exactly. And that's what we always say. Why be upset when you can just have fun? Exactly. Why tell people they're not enjoying their wine the right way when you could just eat tacos and drink wine and have Exactly. This, I'm impressed with Danny. I am. How involved do we do we know how involved he was in this, in like the creation of this wine? I think he was probably involved in just like tasting along the way to mm. figure out yeah. if he liked the way that it tasted. Yeah. I don't think he was out there stopping on the grapes. Mm. <laughs> um, a lot of winemakers. He wasn't out there harvesting like our girly. Danny's feet stomp these this <laughs> glass of wine. Yeah, no, I would be so curious to find out how this tasted with the $700 shoey decanter. Now, do you think it would just have elevated air? Yeah, it would have elevated it that much more. Honestly, this decanter is one of like the premium decanters in the <laughs> yeah. in the market. Eat it, Dan and Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> we got the best on the market. Fuck your shoey decanter. <laughs> you know, I'm sure it's a good like collector's item and all that good stuff, you know. And, um, I'll take one if you want to give me one. If you wanted to give us one, us wrong. If you want to, yeah. If you want to prove us wrong, you can just send us one. You but accept, until then, we'll out. be saying, that's trash. <laughs> this is where this, it's really at. Now, what is the benefit of aerating wine? I have always wondered that. So, oxidation, right? So, sometimes there's, for instance, during the fermentation, so in fermentation, like it depends on what you put it in. You can put it in like stainless steel, right? Or just like big open vats or whatever. After fermentation, they put it into either a barrel or what all the cool kids now to you'd like to use now, clay mm. or ah. amphora or even concrete. And so, oh. what that all does is like depending on the the kind of I guess porousness. Porousness, mm -hmm. that's, a that's correct a word. word. Yeah. Uh, it helps oxidize and kind of like round the wine a little bit. That, okay. Like it brings kind of like everything together. Um, and for this, since it was closed for so long and it was aged in, for instance, new new oak, I believe there's like 20% new oak, which means when you talk about new oak versus used oak or old oak, Right. Basically, the old oak, what they do is they kind of char the inside of the wood. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that kind of brings out, like, the sweetness and the spice of the barrel. And I've seen, like, there are some wines now. Um, I don't remember what kind is, but they do, like, whiskey barrel oak wine. Where, like, if they take, like, they use the same barrel that used to have whiskey in it. Yeah. And they... Do put the wine in that so that it gets kind of like those same flavors. Yeah, I right? don't like, try those. They're... I don't think I want yeah. to. Actually, I don't really love whiskey anyways. Yeah. But yeah, no. so I feel like the barrel, like in my brain, I'm picturing like a cast iron mm. where like you don't ever like clean your cast iron fully because yeah. you like want to keep those seasonings. Mm -hmm. exactly. Is that like the same thing? Like yeah, exactly. So yeah. they they 
or they don't even char. Sorry, I'm thinking about bourbon. They basically they they just make these barrels, wood barrels. Um, most common used barrel is the French French barrel, mm-hmm. which is you know depending on climate, American oak is going to be a little sweeter and like spicier yep. in flavor. And then the the French barrel is going to be a little more like subtle, yeah, and elegant. I would say, yeah. Um, but it's also because it's what we're used to. <laughs> Sorry, it just went to sleep, and I just want you to press turn it back on. Four, two, one, four. The camera goes to sleep too. I guess. I didn't know. It, it probably has like the okay. limit of how much time you can record. Maybe. You can't just record. This is like this is our yeah. first official YouTube video. It's gonna be really good. Already, yeah, editing is gonna be a fun. Disaster. The editing will be fun. Um, yeah, I'll fix it in post. Yeah, it's fine. So really you don't cut off. It. They don't char the inside of the barrel. Sorry, that's messed up. Um, anyways, that's for whiskey. <laughs> that's fucked up. Yeah, that's for. That's whiskey. only for whiskey. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm so wet. Is it hot in here? Or am I nervous about? Know, this? Like, I'm so we got a lot of lights on us. Also, we're drinking wine, so, so I'm like really sweaty. It is kind of warm in here. I this, think you're nervous. Is, Are you nervous? Yeah, you're really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> this is good, right? Mm-hmm. I it's think so. Delish. It's do we need like... to like wash out our glasses no, before we do no, like no. a cab? You want to do a little bit more of this? Yeah, sure. You might as well. Fine. Twist my arm. Probably get in here for a refill. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to crawl. You would be out of frame if you stood. <laughs> I, I just, dead and her arm just coming in here. This is literally the most <laughs> janky YouTube video that's ever gonna be uploaded. <laughs> we need a production team. We like actually need a production team. Um, Do you want to produce YouTube videos? <laughs> <laughs> we need you. Wait, I also Nicole need you to like scooch in this way a little more. Oh, I don't yeah. think you're as in the frame as we thought you were. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh my God, you were leaning over the other way. Sorry, I didn't want to be seated next to you. <laughs> didn't want to be perceived right now. I know. <laughs> no, but this is nice. Um, what do you get in uh, in your palate? What do you taste? I'm not going to lie to you. Like I said, I smelled a little bit like cherry, and I'm getting that in like flavoring yeah, a little bit too. that's good. I love cherry. So like I could be like wishful thinking, like placebo effect. I want to be tasting cherry, yeah. and I am, but it tastes so good. I get a lot of like dark cherry for sure. I was like, our palace, <laughs> the same. <laughs> um, <sure. laughs> cool, I was like, I taste red wine. It's so funny. Literally, the one time, so you know, Andre has the rose. Yeah. And his rose actually tastes like roses. Like, yeah. there, there is a rose flavor. And I DM'd him once and I was like, how do you get you it to taste? Drunk. I was like, how do you get it to taste like roses? I was like, are there roses in it? And he was like, are you stupid? <laughs> <laughs> he's he's on me. He's like, honestly, I thought you were just like some random person asking me this question. I literally said, how dumb is this person? And I was like, <laughs> nice. <laughs> how dumb? Well, because like person? I genuinely, it's so hard for me to understand like how grapes can taste so different across yeah. yeah. like the different varieties. Because there's only a handful of variety of grapes, right? That oh, they make so many. Oh, there Italy are. Italy alone has like four hundred of them. But aren't they all like kind of like the same? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know where you're getting to. Like, <laughs> there's like the, there's they're there's the Chardonnay but, grapes, and but they're the same. The, they but all they all I come from the same. I think we're all different, but they, we also stay the same. Exactly. <laughs> it's kind of like saying, like, you know, we're all Homo sapien, right? Yeah. And so, even if we are different in some ways, we kind of all do the same same things. Like, we all built some habits, or we all like, you know, and it's just like the little things that makes us different. That like spices us up a little mm-hmm. bit, right? Mm-hmm. But in reality, you know, we're all we're all one, and that's kind of like the same thing with grapes. Is the Vitis vinifera is like the main one that everyone uses. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, you have like the ones that basically were the mother and father of all these other grapes that came up after. They were the Adam and Eve's. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. exactly. I shouldn't start talking about religion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how we do that religious on this pod. I'm consistently getting in trouble for speaking on religion. I'm like the least religious person, but I got in trouble with the whole Catholic faith. The Are you one. serious? Oh my God. Yeah, there's a whole thing about the Pope. Um, I grew up Catholic, guys, but you know, everyone has the right to be who they are. <laughs> he was just saying we're all homo sapiens and it's our differences that spice us up. So yeah. this is actually a DEI podcast. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. Really good segue. Um, 
I will say, I like how thick it is. Yeah. Like, it's I nice, like, like mouthfeel. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Like, it does it. It's definitely not a crisp wine. Yeah. It's something that makes me feel cozy. Yeah. That's good. Uh-huh. Yeah, what happens when you eat, like, a nice steak, right? It always mm-hmm. feels like... Yeah. Like, so it's like the fat in the in the steak, the spice in the steak. Uh, yeah, and all that, like, comes really well with, like, wines like this. Would you say this is an highly acidic wine or no yeah i would say like medium medium it's so good it's really it is funny though like how when you eat different things and then take a sip like it tastes so Mm -hmm. different like i just had like a chip and it tastes very different right now like i feel like it's more acidic like it's tasting more acidic because the saltiness of this versus when i was eating the steak with it yeah yeah so interesting yeah and it's just like Science. the way it complements yeah you know we just discovered umami like not too long ago right so that's like the thing that every every like restaurant now uses like more uh, japanese flavors because they're like the kings of umami or the queens mm. of umami um but yeah uh the kings and the queens of umami yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'll drink to that <laughs> oh man let me try it with the steak. I actually didn't do the... Oh. I didn't do the little... Your number one recommendation. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Obviously. That's for you. <laughs> you know, I drink wine because I do like to learn about it, but it's all about the good times, we said, right? Mm-hmm. All right, come on. Amen. That is true. That is so true. Wow, that was some nice ASMR right in the microphone. <laughs> Take your <laughs> bite. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold up. Yeah, we all have to just go like... You gotta do when they do a spit take. This one. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That means I can do it somewhere. Yeah. Like this one. Oh. You guys know what that is. Surprises right? the mukbang. Yeah, that's because you're supposed to. Learn. Then you're supposed to spit it. I mean, that's if you're just trying it out, but we're okay, drinking it. Okay, I'm going to try this now. Yeah, that's why I don't, like, I would be a bad <laughs> Somali. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I would be bad at Somali school because I feel like that's alcohol abuse. I don't want to spit it out. I want to drink I mean, it. You drink, you have, like, you taste, like, 20 to... I tried to, like, to, it, I think. I don't know. I didn't do that right. <laughs> it's up into my nose. It's like different. It's like oh. kind of concentrated right here, right? Like kind of keep it on this side. Okay, on the side. And sides. it helps like, yeah. Oh, I was going, I, so, I think right I either. was like middle of my tongue. I was just, it just shot. Yeah, yeah I kind of right back. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> just, I can't do it. I'm not. All right, everyone. Now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grab a mic. Get in there. <laughs> all, t- all together now. Yeah. If you know the words, sing along. <laughs> yeah, oh, anyways. So, yeah, this is this is great. I like that one. I'm real into this. I'm excited for the next one. And then also just from like tasting it and seeing it and everything, the process, whatever. Like you, if you buy another bottle and you hold it, like I'm sure you can drink it like 10 to 20 years from now. Really? You think yeah. it'll age that well? I, I was nervous. I was like, I bought this in November. Mm-mm. I was like, I've been holding on to this for months. Is it still going to be good? Yeah. No, there's like a lot of things that. What makes, what makes a wine good to age? Like what about it? Uh, it's like so many different conditions. <laughs> like <laughs> I, I, question yeah, <laughs> it's like so many conditions. It's obviously from, from the very beginning, from how they grow the grape, right? Mm-hmm. Proper picking, whatever, to fermentation process. That's why one of the main things, I think, like, correct me if I'm wrong, guys out there. Uh, <laughs> Keyboard it, warriors, yeah, get ready. <laughs> exactly. It's like 90% of, like, winemaking, beer wit making, any kind of alcohol making is cleaning. It's like, it depends on how clean or how, like, you know, tight of a program any of these, like, wineries or distilleries etc keep Mm -hmm. and if you're making quality things like in a restaurant you're the cleanliness is going to be like top tier yeah so you don't get any off products during the fermentation yeah um and then also other than that it's like the aging process a lot of stainless steel um wines might not be not might not be good to age 
but it probably can be good to age because of like the amount of skin contact or whatever. The skin, and the red wine. That's why red wines are usually the best for aging because of the the skin. Mm, okay. The skin to skin. Yeah, it's like Ben. I forget what the name of it. I think it's like the benzoyl ring that the the tannins have. Like, is really good for uh, aging. Okay. For holding the wine. Alcohol is another thing, and then acid <clears throat> is another thing. So it's like tannin, alcohol, acid. Like these are the the three things that you want in a wine. So if it has all those things, good acid, right? Oh yeah. Like yeah. the grip. Yeah, yeah. real think? good. Yeah. Really uh, good. And then alcohol, what is it, like 13 and a half, maybe 14%? That's why we, that's I have no idea. maybe the main reason I like wine. Because of the alcohol content? I was just thinking, when I, I was maybe. wondering, well, I wonder what it was. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite thing about wine? Number one. I, like I said before, it was like the stories. I got it, I got it, I got it. Oh, oh, Carly, that was nailed good. It. That was, <laughs> nailed it. <laughs> Yeah, my favorite thing about wine is like honestly the stories. Time. Yeah, the stories. Um, when you actually go to the vineyard and like you build the story with whoever like makes the wine, it's like even yeah. better. Uh, there's a like situation. Uh, get sidetracked a little bit, but there was like a winery vineyard in uh, in this place in Italy called Cinque Terre. If anyone's been there, I've been there. Uh, and <laughs> very like big slopes. So you're like wondering yeah. how they. Have you been yeah. Great place. Uh, oh, beautiful. Stunning. Uh, we talked about that with um, Matteo, didn't we? Mm-hmm. The goats. And the Dolomites. The goats. Because mm-hmm. that's where the Ferrari is in the Dolomites. Oh. Yeah. Like in those, like in the outskirts, like the outside of the five lands or whatever? No. So Cinque Terre is different than the Dolomites. Okay. Because Cinque Terre is over oh, near sorry, France. I, I, yeah. And where the Ferrari Trento vineyards <laughs> are, are like up um, on the Italian Swiss border. Gotcha. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, anyways, sorry. Uh, there, I met this family or husband and wife team, uh, really like in their eighties, maybe ninety years old, like older age. Um, but they, they were probably like second or third generation out doing this, and yeah, it was just like kind of like what. And they told me a little bit about themselves and how nobody else is gonna take their like their vineyard now because. Their sons and daughters were like, didn't want to do it. And I was, yeah. Absolutely fucking fucking up. Exactly. (laughs) You're making a huge mistake. Like, you're throwing away your dream, no doubt, and throwing away yours. Like, no, you're throwing away mine. Yeah. I don't even know you, but you're throwing away my dream. And I told them, I was like, I'll take it. Like, literally. (laughs) Yeah. They couldn't ask for a better son. Yeah. (laughs) I'll I'll say it. I'll say it. I was like, yeah, I was like, Mexicans and Italians, we have a lot in common, right? And he was like, huh? You're Mexican? <laughs> yeah, dude. You can no. pass as Italian. Yeah, exactly. That's it. You have a little bit of Latino in you, and you always can pass for Italian. That's why I'm accepted by Nick's family. Who says that? What? Who says that? Who says what? That if you're a little bit Latino, you're accepted. I as... just said that. I'm just, No, I'm not saying you're accepted. You can pass for Italian. <laughs> okay. Like, Latino <laughs> can generally pass for Italian, like, and vice versa. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I look Italian, but I'm not. It's like that Southern European blood, I guess, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. a little dark, got dark features yeah. and yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, like, kind of, like, the little things like that. I went to Santa Barbara and went to Stoltman Vineyards, and, they, you know, they kind of told me, like, what they do. And, obviously, you know, the family that owns that, they're, like, lawyers, had money, whatever. Mm. But they still put back into the community of like people that they that work for them. Yeah. So like three acres of their land is for the people that work on the fields, and they can sell whatever they like. What they can make whatever they want, and they sell that, and that's kind of like their bonus in a sense. Oh, cute. I and like so that. like little little things like that, right? Yeah. Like I think it's that's the little like, things. Yeah. In life, always. Exactly. Um, and then also, what did you say before that you liked about one? The alcohol content. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, say less right it's like a, it's a it's a given yeah it's a plus it's always a plus and it tastes good obviously it tastes so yeah good. it tastes good it makes you feel good yeah have fun you have fun tastes good a wine drunk is always my favorite drunk to be same i've never had happy. a bad time no i'm always happy i'm just like chill happy mellow having a good time yeah that's me feel with love. tequila but we'll have that's... another episode on that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so, no, I think it's Checo needs to come out with his own tequila brand. And yeah, that's what we'll, I was saying. And yeah. then we'll come back. And we'll do it's this. only a matter of time. It's only it's a matter, only a matter of, time. of time. He'll I mean, get we into have it. To do this. We have to do gin yeah. with 
Valtteri is. Yeah, how do you feel about Jin? I'm not a huge fan, but I do. I do like. I do get it. (laughs) Turn the cameras off. I do get it. Like it's it's nice. Like it's not for me. That's That's fair. Yeah. We get it. We we respect you. I respect that. Oh, okay. I'll just go. uh... (laughs) We we respect a difference of opinions in this household. You know what is nice is now you have Danny's signature right here. So I can forge ah, documents. Yeah. Should we should we show the box? I was like really oh, fascinated. Like I, I like the box. Oh, I did a lot of B roll. Don't worry. Oh, I man. did some B roll earlier. Thank you. The boxes are real nice though. Yeah, I was like, what is it? Yeah, the attention to detail is great on the box. Yeah. Well, because they they gotta ship it from Australia, so it's gotta be sturdy. It's gotta be sturdy. Sturdy. Can't. And they had to ship liquid, and we know. We we know we have suffered. You shouldn't really suffer liquid. <laughs> That's what you guys should have gotten. We should have Yeah. Yeah, um, you're right. All right, I'm ready for the next one. Sorry. Yeah, let's to... try it. No, let's go. Let's go. I'm gonna do a quick. I'm gonna do a quick sommelier thing here. No, it's not recording. So hit record. I don't. It's not recording. Is there a limit? Yeah, there's a limit. No, it's not recording, Kate. See, it's not red. You should turn it around, honestly. It might. I might be out of storage. You're out now. Okay. Well, I'm gonna come over here. Um. Thank you. <laughs> Can you see it? Can you see it? Okay, do we need to rinse what these is glasses? Like, is there like okay? a background music or some like... Yeah, like, there will be... There we'll will be. Some, no, we'll, no, but I'm saying like in, in these like F1 events, like what do they usually play? Oh, it's the cars. Zoom, zoom. I obviously love F1, right? <laughs> I obviously love it. Here's the thing, though. You don't you don't necessarily have to love it, but you're a supporter of the two girls. Yeah, of course. And at the end of the day, that's all that matters. Yeah, of course. I It's not that I hate it. I just never got into it. Yeah. So I think totally it's interesting. Fair. I think it's cool. Like, even, like, NASCAR. I'm just like, oh, I can see why people like it, but... Totally. I don't... I haven't actually, like... We're recent invested. converts. Yeah, we are. Oh, that's nice. So... We're recent NASCAR girls. Did you guys go to a NASCAR event? Yeah, I have not been to a NASCAR oh. event. All right. Okay. Uh, so this is the uh, cab, good. right? Yes, this is the cab. Mm-hmm. Where, this I'm excited about. The Kuna, Kunawara? Kunawara? I Sorry, have my sometimes glasses on, so I can't see. I think it's Kuna, Kunawara yeah, area. Yeah, Kunawara. Right? Yeah, I'm like, my my English sometimes I like mix it with Spanish, so <laughs> it's like... A little Spanglish. Yeah, exactly. Kunawara. <laughs> I think it sounds way cooler anyway. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, so before yeah. the Shiraz or the Syrah uh, are great from their own valley, right? Okay, is it is it Shiraz or Shiraz? Uh, the Aussies, I forgot why they switched it to Shiraz in Australia. Okay. It's like they're distinct, like, oh, this is our style of making Syrah, and mm-hmm. so we're going to, I don't know, I, it's like anything, right? Like, they come up with this name and we stuck with it. Okay. And... Uh, I forgot. I didn't like actually. I was like looking into. It. I was like, why is it Shiraz? But there was like, I forgot. Honestly. Okay, that's Anyways. fine. Uh, one thing about this this content creation, this podcast, this no facts. We don't fact check, so we just <laughs> say things, and then it is on everyone else to go ahead and, and educate go us. Look up their own answers. Yeah. So off the bat, Carly, get over here. Not smelling as nice as the other one. I think the other one smelled better. This one smells more acidic to me. Like it's like sharper. This one smells more alcoholy. That's yes, a exactly, that's a exactly. good so Cabernet generally generally that. is a more acidic grape than Syrah. Okay. Um obviously it all depends on where it grows. Uh but in general, like it's very that's why it's a very ageable grape. That's why in the Napa Valley or even a Sometimes in Sonoma, uh, it was like what was created, what everyone was hyped over, right? Yeah. And then wines from Bordeaux, for example, in France, uh, people like one of the big grapes is Cabernet mm. uh, because of that. Is What was like one of the things that I said that helps wine be ageable? The skin contact. No, another oh. thing. The way air. that it's air. No, you said Oxidized? it. This smells more... Acidity. Acidity. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Ooh, I'm not good at school. <laughs> Thanks, Fred. Kate's not taking notes. I'm not notes, physically so taking notes, so I can't do that. I, <laughs> I have to physically take notes, or I don't know anything. This one looks darker, yeah. I will say, right off the bat. Yeah. And the legs are 
let me say that I'm gonna I'm gonna say this might not be real, but the legs are appearing faster. Okay. They're appearing faster and they're way longer. Like they're like really dripping down. From what I from what I recall, uh, Kunawara is on the more southern area of like that, like southern Australia area where they grow wine, mm-hmm. like valleys. Um, so it's probably a little cooler. Uh, where it it all and I think it's also depending on like what what works well and once somebody like a wine a vineyard or a winemaker or whatever finds that that grape works well in that region yeah it's kind of what they like end up planting okay. and i believe that's what they felt in that area i'm also surprised they grow this grape in uh barosa so i'm surprised they didn't <laughs> just get grapes from barosa mm. to kind of show their whole like because the whole thing about barosa like i said before is like you know the oldest vines yeah some of the oldest vines in the world are in that area maybe it was at a price point they couldn't get so here's a question That's and right. i feel like this is probably obvious but is it normal for because it takes different climates for different types of grapes to make different kinds of wines so is it normal for like a vineyard or like a wine company to have like several different vineyards like around oh, the yeah. world for different things and so like would i be, like go to the like St. Hugo winery or vineyard, but it, it's just like one of many. Yeah, so it's okay. not it's not really like around the world. Usually, obviously, they try to stay um, around that that same specific area. Right. And it depends on what grape they wanna they wanna <clears> grow. <throat> uh, like I said before, I'm not like a huge like Australia uh, expert expert, but like for instance in California, uh, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay grows on the left side which is Sonoma, and on the right side, you get, like, your more hefty, like, big grapes, like Cabernet. Got it. Uh, Merlot at times. Uh, yeah. Depends, like, yeah. There's, like, so many grapes. But, yeah, anyways. Just <laughs> There's kind of so many grapes yeah. out there. <laughs> okay, question. Do people eat wine grapes or no? Yeah, you can. You can? Do yeah. they taste good? Yeah, they're sweet. Okay. They yeah. taste like wine? Tastes like a bear. I don't think I've ever had, like, I a... Just, I want to drink this, so okay. I'm just going to go... Cheers. Cheers. Carly? <laughs> yeah, so right away you said it was like faster, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the legs are probably heavier. Woo! So a little more alcohol? Yeah. This is tasting. I like this Fine. one. I love a cab. This one feels more florally. Uh-huh. Oh, that was a good one, Nicole. That's a good one. <laughs> She's learned. Like... <laughs> So, Here's what I've found with wine is if, if I don't love the smell, I like the taste a lot more. It's like very like opposite. Uh, like if I don't love the smell, it's usually a good sign that I'm going to really like the taste. But if I really like the smell, I'm usually probably not going to like the taste. It's like opposite for me. This one why. tastes less bitey. Mm-hmm. Less bitey? Mm-hmm. Like I feel like the other one, the oh, see, Shiraz, I, like the had a, a fast, yeah, like a quicker upfront, like kind of bite of mm. the alcohol. Whereas this one, I'm not getting it as much. See, I would think the exact opposite. I think mm. the other one was a lot like smoother. This one like gives me like a, we're going to have fun. Mm. You know, like it really punches you. I think she's right. I'm sorry. I mean, I know she's it's right. There is a right answer <laughs> on this one, Nicole. <laughs> it's fine. I guess to each their own, I'm still having a good time. Yeah, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. That's stupid. Oh, I'm just fine. kidding, guys. It's okay. <laughs> Eric's favorite thing to do is be mean to me, so it's okay. Yeah. I'm used to it. <laughs> you guys haven't seen... I mean, nobody got to see it today, right? No. <laughs> mm, mm, okay, mm. let me try with a little food. Yeah, I tell everyone that all I like to do is uh, talk shit, so mm-hmm. here we are. That's why you're That's perfect for the friends. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we're on this podcast right now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All we do is talk shit. Mm-hmm. Two girls talking shit. Mm-hmm. That's nice. We should have sent Eric all the drivers and had him pick one. For what? Just in general? Just in general. Oh, well, he's a Danny Rick fan now. I am. Look at me. <laughs> I need to bring it up. Not a driver. <laughs> right now. Carly. Right now. What do you think is going to get him? Honda? Well, so he's technically the third driver for Red Bull right now. Oh, they they don't make their own cars yet, right? Not yet. They were supposed to this year, but then something fell through. Honda decided to keep making their engines for another two years, I think. Okay. Um, but 
we're like waiting for them to just like get sick of Checo and fire him and then bring Danny back. So the third driver, basically. So the first driver is the one you're going to see in every race, and they usually have a second one on the race. No, they right? have two, two drivers per race. Right. Um, third driver is, no one really calls it a third driver. It's usually reserve. a reserve driver. So if, if one of the two drivers is sick or injured or something, the reserve driver goes in. Got it. Just like a backup. Cool. It's an understudy. Yeah. Usually the reserve in, the in wine is life. like, it's like the VIP stuff. It is. I mean, and, and that's Danny for Red Bull. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, in terms of Red Bull, Danny is their reserve in the VIP sense. Because yes. He's you hear their that, golden Danny? boy. Send us that to Cantor. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> one eleven. <laughs> okay, well, he wants to be part of this so bad now. You want to get on the couch? No. Okay, which one do we think we like better? This one. I love a cab. Cab always for oh, me. Oh, man. I like both. I actually like the other one a little more. This I was one gonna is say, I me... think I like the Shiraz better. This one is just... Well, I could be because I'm like, this is not my third glass of wine, but I'm like, this one is really making me feel like really warm and fuzzy inside. <laughs> yeah. like, I'm like, this one, I feel it in my chest. Like, I'm getting that warm feeling, but I think it might be just because I'm getting a little drunk. I feel like this one with... Uh, it has a little too much oak for what I usually like in the okay. wine. Um, I think this one has like 60% new oak. Well, there is oak. a 60% uh, alcohol content. Yeah, like, that's like, that's a street spam. No, no. I, <laughs> I was like, well, that's why I'm warm and fuzzy yeah. right now. <laughs> I can't remember. I think that's what it was. Um, but, and then the, you can obviously tell, right, I mean, you can tell right away because it's a little spicier as well. Spi mm -hmm. I know. I like a spicy wine. That's yeah. what I really like. So it's a little spicier. Uh, and it's still a little too round for my liking. I think it needs some time to develop. Uh, but also you can see, what is this one, 2018? Yeah. Yeah, 2018. So probably had, what is this, their current release? Mm -hmm. So it probably had more time in barrel uh, just because of that. Also, it's like one thing for Cabernet. You know, it has all the right conditions. It has a lot of tannin, has a lot of acid, mm -hmm. and has a lot of alcohol. It's just like a very hearty grape. Yeah. Uh, Syrah can be as well. But I think it's like in, like in that medium, medium high situation. Yeah. Um, which is why like it works really well in Australia, like climate in general. Or it's like the grape that they, because they, you can get it, you can use it in really cool climates. Mm -hmm. And it'll give you this like more fun and playful grape. Yeah. Or you can use it in like warmer climates where you get like a lot of like depth and flavor and also like structure and, yeah. mm -hmm. and all this good stuff that, you know, you want to say about grapes. Love to talk what about What are the grapes. adjectives we can list about grapes? <laughs> <laughs> this is a Mad Libs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, no, don't get me wrong. This one is really good too, but I do think I like the straws better. This is great. It's really nicely like, done. I think I would like this one with a nice chocolate pe piece of chocolate cake. There you go. I would like this with like a, with a... Um, this is probably definitely not what you're supposed to... But like, it's making me really crave like an Alfredo pasta. Dude. I know. I don't know why. <laughs> I think I've just like straight up been craving Alfredo pasta for like a little bit now. Regardless of the wine she's drinking, she still wants an Alfredo. I just <laughs> am craving Alfredo pasta. So hi, welcome to the podcast where we have Alfredo pasta and Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> Apparently, that's wrong. A match made in heaven. <laughs> I didn't realize we we're in Wisconsin or something. <laughs> it's hey. Franzia. And <laughs> Alfredo from Olive Garden. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unloaded breadsticks, baby. Exactly. Yeah. Cancun is in the Midwest. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's actually the Tulum. <laughs> Tulum of the Midwest. Yeah, this is, this is really nice. I feel like this is like the kind of wine, like I said before. It's like, it's a little brighter too than Syrah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a little brighter than Syrah. Um, Definitely spicier. Yeah, spicier. Uh, a little more bold, uh, but shit, let's let's kill these wines, huh? Yeah, let's, let's do, it. do it. That's what I'm saying. I think this this is why I think I would really enjoy it with like a sweeter yeah thing, like a rich chocolate cake because yeah. I think it would bite the like cut the spiciness a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I need to do me either way, so good. Can you put this like lower it and just have it get some like B roll of like. Kind of just like our hands holding, not our faces, so that if we need to cut in, if we can't match up audio anywhere, we can just like cut to like. Yeah. Perfect. This, where like you don't see our. our... 
the guess house. we didn't really say what we what we smelled or tasted, huh? No, yeah. we just went straight for it. We we're just like, fuck we it. Said, <laughs> no, I said it's taste floral. S- smelled said florally, floral. and oh, you yeah. said that's right. <laughs> you said I was right. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I like, said it's, it was more acidic. Producer. Wait, I'm sorry. How do you want this to look? <laughs> just not our mouth. Like, like, just do like no a close way. up. Like, I want it to like be close. In also, here. no, it's okay because in we can zoom in on the video okay. footage okay. in but Premiere. So just no do whatever. Way. We'll figure out transitions and whatever. Just okay, film some here. shit. I mean, yeah, I'm just saying, like, get some like non, like a little like an artsy shot. Like, just go oh, down do a little more head shot. Where we get heads. like a, our just like our hands drinking <laughs> yeah, stuff. Yeah. Thank you, Carly. <laughs> Get Carly, already. drink some wine. I have them. Carly, get a little top off. And tell them to go fuck themselves. Hey. <laughs> hey. I don't know you that well yet. <laughs> Just kidding. You can tell me to fuck off. <laughs> That's how you know you're uh, Nicole's friend. <laughs> <laughs> and Carly, obviously. And Carly. All right. Producer? You want to know a fun fact is that I only met Carly in person for the first time like a year and a half ago. I think, yeah, you told me that. Is that yeah. nuts? That's crazy. Not look at us. Not look at us. She's in my wedding. <laughs> See? Wait, when are you, when are you, when's your wedding? Are you having Daniel Ricardo there? Yeah, actually, I'm yeah, marrying no him. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just kidding. Check yourself before no. you wreck yourself. <laughs> no, uh, October. Oh, gotcha. Damn. that will be fun. What's the exact location? <laughs> I'm not going to be there, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> what t- daytime and place, location. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Coordinates. coordinates, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Drop those exact Is there a magic word to get in there or something? <laughs> like... You just drop a pin. <laughs> <laughs> just send me the pin when you get a chance, right? Yeah. You just send my, me your you app. You want to be my plus one? You can be my plus one. Yeah. Would lo- honestly, would love this. <laughs> would love it. We're both plus ones. We're going to bring Let's so go. True. <laughs> yeah, they, they're the only two in my entire wedding. Um like invite lists that have plus ones that are out not like that are, that are like i don't i don't have husbands yeah we don't have a husband <laughs> it's nobody in my nobody at my wedding gets a plus one uh, unless, they're unless they're like married or dating someone they're uh, the okay. only two that's fair even that's like fair. my little brother um doesn't have a girlfriend and so he doesn't get plus one. <laughs> no it's fair it's like i i think i went to a wedding and they were like only people that are married get a plus one yeah and I, was I like, feel like a long-term relationship should count as yeah. plus one, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But. All right. Yeah, so everyone everyone out there, if you want to apply to be Nicole's plus one to my wedding. <laughs> the Hunger we'll Games. Leave, we'll leave a link um, in the description, and it's going to be, a, you have to fill out your bio. Yeah, exactly. You have to pitch yourself. Elevator pitch yourself to be Nicole's plus one to my wedding. That'll be perfect. That's what we it's basically do a giveaway. Be a, we do a giveaway. We do a giveaway in Nicole's plus one to Kate's wedding. Oh my god. You have to apply. Everyone, you have to like, like comment, and subscribe comment. to the YouTube. Oh my god, I'm dead. And you could win a spot at my wedding as Nicole's plus one. Everyone, please move this way. I don't know why you're going away oh. from me. And Nicole keeps trying to get out of the frame. Sorry. Well, I keep trying to eat my taco. It's so far away. She's like leaning why over. Why are you putting it all the way over there, though? I just don't want it to like be in the frame, I guess. I don't know. Okay. No, no. Oh, Nicole. That's why. That's why. <laughs> mm. All right. Okay. This wine is really good. Honestly, second glass better than the first. In mm-hmm. terms of price point, it was like 80, 90 bucks a bottle. Yeah. Oh, I wanted to do this before we went to this one. As our wine expert, rate the Shiraz. Uh, from one to ten, one being the worst wine you've ever had, ten being the best wine you've ever had. Okay, but in terms of Shiraz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, not just like overall. Right, I'm just yeah. saying like yeah. that. Okay. Give it a rating. I need a. Yeah, I'll drink straight out of that. Yeah, just. Yeah, yeah fuck it. <laughs> no. <laughs> we have plenty of wine glasses mm, here. Shot glass. Might be a little dusty. <laughs> I think, honestly, for a New World. Oh yeah, old world versus new world. Anything yeah. outside of Europe or France and Italy, it's gonna be new world. That feels a little classic. Pretentious. Yeah, it kind well. of. Yeah, it also comes with like <laughs> yeah. yeah, kind of right. Um, it also comes with like you think of French barrels or like French French oak. There's not a lot of it because yeah. it comes from France. 
Yeah. And so. France is pretty small. Specific, yeah. So specific <laughs> places in that. <laughs> spe- relatively speaking. Spe- specific like wine Can't countries. Can't be a lot of it. Just going to tiny little country. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> trees, trees grow. Everywhere. Only one tree in France. <laughs> There's only one tree in France. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty crazy. Yeah. Thank you, pretty You learn something Harley. new every day on this podcast. <laughs> oh, it smells even better now. Now we're getting it. <laughs> what are you doing over there? Do <laughs> <laughs> for the shot. Trying to listen to Kate. Shoot it. I stubbed my toe. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, this is literally gonna be the worst YouTube video that the YouTube has ever seen. The people are gonna love it. Let's hope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there, everyone's gonna be like, "Where's Carly at? I want to see Carly." <laughs> mystery. Yeah, she's her voice has been in a few things, but never she. Uh, no Barely. one knows what she looks like. Barely. Barely. All right. mm-hmm. Scale of one to ten. Rate this Shiraz. This is to like eight and a half. Wow. Okay. Damn. Eight Danny and a half. Rick, do you hear that? Yeah. It's really nice. Eight and a half. I All right. I was really genuinely surprised. <laughs> yeah, Same. It was. My expectations were very low. Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. I was really not. Low. I was. Not, I didn't do any research on like reviews or yeah reviews or anything. Yeah, I just feel like I have didn't never even really heard anything. Yeah. Yeah, it's like nicely balanced. Like even even though the area is like supposed to be like warm, um, it's not like overly like it's not pick it's pick it feels like the alcohol for instance, is not like coming out at you. It's like not attacking yeah. you. Uh for I don't know if you've had like cabs where they're like in the nineties, I guess, in California they were doing these like big bold cabs. And I'm gonna be honest with you, no. Yeah, I was gonna say, probably, I don't know if you've had. <laughs> I was about one. About one? In the 90s. <laughs> yeah. I was one to six years old. You I wasn't paying attention to the wines. You still open That's still a late recording, bottle. Right, right what? Uh, Nicole? What? Uh, the, the, that is still recording, right? That one is, yeah. Okay. That's yeah. sick. Oh, yeah, I can see the whole thing. Bing, beep, 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 mm-hmm. beep. It's going up and picking up our voices, hopefully. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. Um,. But yeah, I would say eight and a half, like good acid, like good body. Danny, Danny's wine has good acid. Danny Rick, good ass. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting more chaotic. <laughs> this is like a drunken. This thing. is like uh, this is like the Kylie Jenner like get ready with me, where she just like gets drunk with her guests, and they just like do each other's makeup, and they're just like drinking and getting <laughs> fucked up. And by the end, you're like, what's happening here? That's I, There's have been many a Twitch, chaotic Twitch stream where we have been <laughs> drunk on wine. We're just drunk on the internet a lot. Yeah, we are. That's good. That's fine. Good times. It's about the shits and giggles, dude. <laughs> Always. Always. Lo- sh- to shits and gigs. Shits and gigs, dude. The shits and gigs. Carly? Wine. <laughs> Mazel. Wine. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, and now the cab. I rated like in the same area. Rated in the same area. Yeah. I need you to. I need you to do this because I'm gonna. My vision. So I have yeah. Vision for this <laughs> section. So this one, a little lower. I wish it had a little less. Like I, I wish it had a little bit more of the fruit. Yeah. Come out, okay. You know? Fair but enough. But this is also perception, right? Like yeah. somebody else is gonna be like, "Oh, this is a ten wine." Yeah. I think like seven it's, and a half. Yeah. Eight, seven and a half. Eight, eight. Yeah. Like it's like probably with age, I'll be like, "Oh, this is an amazing wine." But as of right now, like it's it's still got like too much to actually give me, if that makes sense, too much of everything else to like actually give me what the juice is like. Yeah. It's like when you make a meal yeah. one day and you're like, this is really good. But you're like, tomorrow it's going to be so bomb once these flavors really congeal together. You oh, know? yeah. It's like curry. Curry tastes better the second day. Oh, yeah. Honestly, I'm going to say something that's potentially controversial. Not again. <laughs> <laughs> Pasta Alfredo. <laughs> um, okay, I was gonna say something controversial. Yeah, I don't remember what it was. It was about curry. Oh, oh, it was that food. Okay, here's my controversial opinion. Everything that's meant to be eaten hot is better cold the next day. 
I I'm a, I love a it cold depends. leftover. A cold leftover. Like, some people are like, ew, cold mac and cheese is bad. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, mac and cheese cold Reheated is, is bad. Oh, I like yeah. that. You yeah. Don't like reheat. That, like, yeah. I, pizza, way better the next day cold. Yeah. Oh, yeah. hundred percent. My friend, shout out Casey. You guys know Casey? You'll love her, Casey. <laughs> that makes sense. You Wait, know Casey? Do I you know love Casey. Casey. I, I, I know Casey. That's what I meant, like, you and Carly. You know Casey. <laughs> Not the people. Casey. We uh, love Casey. So I lived with her in New York for a summer. We were interns. Uh-huh. And we used to literally on, at night, because we made zero dollars and we were so poor, uh, we would go at night and we would go to McDonald's because we lived above a McDonald's and we would get food and then we would get an extra thing of nuggets and ranch and we would purposely put them in the fridge so that the next day we would eat cold nuggets with ranch for breakfast. Now I gotta disagree with that. That tastes like plastic. Cold chicken nuggets? Yeah. Mm. But with ranch? Plastic with ranch. <laughs> now, ranch makes anything better. I'll eat anything with ranch. I guess that's true. That's true. I'm just saying anything that's meant to be eaten hot is better cold the next day. Yeah. That's Fried my... Chicken? Fried chicken? Oh, yeah. Well, me, reheated fried chicken is not good because it's soggy anyway. Exactly. So it's I cold? think it's cold. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The only thing I don't like cold is rice. I don't think rice is good cold because it's That's too, hard. it's hard. Have it you ever hard, mixed yeah. it with some like rice vinegar and like sesame seed and a little bit of salt? To make so sesame seed oil, sesame seeds too? Like it with cold, when it's cold? Yeah. No, I haven't. That's a new thing I'll have to try. No, I'm going to have to have you make that for me sometime. Yeah. It's good as hell. Okay. Sounds boss. It's on the list. Thank you guys for watching. We're not going to promise we're going to get better, but you know we're going to try. We're going to try. And that's all that matters. Big thanks to Eric for showing up and putting up Group with hugs. us. Group hug. Group hug. And for wearing a Danny Rick shirt. He I showed up say, for the bit. If you want cool. a Danny Rick shirt. We are not selling any Ricard Hope. We're not selling them, right so now. too bad. <laughs> uh, so keep your eyes out. <laughs> Maybe we'll sell more someday. At some and point. that's his, where we don't sell that. Yeah. Danny Ricardo, if you want to send us that decanter. We'll be waiting. Yeah, we'll be waiting. If you want to send more wine, we'll be waiting. Yeah, you we'll were, be right, we'll be you, right here. You wanted to try his Rick Red. Yeah, I did. So I didn't get, that was not out when I ordered these a We'll have a round two, and it'll be really well produced. We'll have a production team. <laughs> we will have hair and makeup. Yeah. It's going to be a good thing, and we'll have the nice. recommend. <laughs> Round two. And we're going to get Peter Luger steak <laughs> to sponsor us. <laughs> sponsored by Peter Luger. It'll be perfect. Anyway, cheers. Cheers. We'll oh, I'm done. Everyone we'll see you there. guys on the internet. See you on the internet. Bye.